Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2. You are watching Star Ladder Star Series Season 8. And today is day number 18. 18 of 30. Now, I have to say, I... Like, I looked through the, the scores today. Oh, by the way, something changed. So, if you are not watching the stream, then you can go to Dota 2... What's the exact link? Dota2.starladder.tv slash league. There you'll be able to see the scores. But otherwise, look at your screen and you see another grey bar through the name of Aspera this time next to 4 of C because Aspera they have also disbanded so they are not participating anymore that means anybody that got a loss against them got a win instead and Aspera themselves of course they have one win up against 4 of C but that's because 4 of C pulled out earlier that's just the way it is but it is uh, gonna be putting uh, for example the biggest difference right now is that without doing anything alliance is actually now ahead of next kz rather than even because they actually lost against aspera and they now have 30 points so they're on top of the list but this top of the list is kind of deceiving because right now if you look at the top four like what could be the top four if everybody wins their games from this point onward which is of course not possible because some will face each other as well but if you look at it that way then you see that there's SSD, Sigma, Roxkiss and Fnatic those are the only four teams that have two losses or less so those could be your top four contestants and, and yes Alliance and Navi are not in there because they have already got three losses anyways I just wanted to show you that Alliance of course if they win this match they'll get even higher up the retry they've got themselves four wins five losses nine games played they're not gonna make it to the top four but they are putting up a fight for teams here of course and they, they don't want to end up in the bottom four though of course right now it's a bit harder to end up in the bottom four because two slots are already taken by two teams that disbanded so the retry for this game will be on the dire side while alliance will be on the radiant side and we've got ourselves elder titan dire crystal main slark and bane banned out and that left for a visage and a bristleback for alliance uh interesting vi visage pickup as in early vis visage pickup it is still pretty decent hero in combination of uh, with the Bristleback because you can slow and Bristleback and just you know run after him and the Quills give you extra stacks of soul some shit it's it's a pretty okay it's a pretty good combination remaining. has some good synergy but uh, normally I would like norm like personally I like to see a support that have a disable and Visit just doesn't have that he is very strong though don't get me wrong I just like him to see paired up with others we've got the retry already selecting a razor indicating that they are expecting perhaps an OD to come out or at least preventing that to come out for now they also also secured themselves an alchemist an alchemist we've seen him in different roles so I'm not really gonna say anything about that just yet we've seen him mid we've seen him off lane we've seen him safe lane well we haven't really seen him off lane that often but support or safe lane I guess Venomans are still picked up by Alliance now if you were looking for a slow combined up with a the bristleback then Venomancer would be my personal choice but if you don't have a Venomancer and visage I mean the, the potential is great but again I feel like they're lacking the sables but they're Hopefully gonna make that right with the last uh, two pickups that they're gonna be doing. And make sure that everything uh, gets to be okay again on the retry. So far only one disabled though. On the Alchemist of course. It was a Dragonite that got banned out by the retry as well as the Enchantress. So still a bit uh, scared maybe for Aki's Enchantress. Though he will be probably playing the Visage this game. Assuming that those are two supports of course. We've seen some different things but I'm not gonna assume anything other so... Uh, yeah, the Lich and the Shadow Demon banned out by Alliance, so that's two extra supports removed. Now, it is a bit of the, the, the maybe the battle of supports here, although Alliance has already secured there too. The retry, they still need one or two. The Chen is still in the pool if they want to go for something like that, it's still possible. Alliance's turn to pick. And the Nyx Assassin is also still available, which is actually something that the retry used as an offlaner before. Has of course got a lot of potential in terms of disable. Puck picked up by Alliance, so S4 will have one of his uh, one of his better heroes. I mean, he's good on, on practically anything, of course. But if you have to draw the line, ten seconds remaining. The retry. So far, using most of their bonus time. Five seconds remaining. Oh yeah, and because I had Steam issues and was busy with resetting Steam and Dota, I, I apparently did not have time to drink my coffee, so I still have it. I'll try to drink it in times where it is uh, inconspicuous and where I, I can give you, you know, a bit of a pause for your ears. 
Um, for people on Dota TV and for people that just joined, um, there will be a co-caster for the next five games, but for this one I'll be by myself. But G Advance will be joining me for the rest. And perhaps I can also convince Nahas to join me and uh, put out some stats and maybe have some nice trivias going. You know what the worst thing is? I didn't actually have time to see the ending of... Oh, there we go. It's just it's just done. Ha! Radiant Vict... Oh, Let me speed it out. Well, that's a shame. That was what I meant. Ah, that's a shame. It was the loser bracket, right? Bed. Yeah, it was. It was. Well, good on Tong Fu. I mean, they have been kind of the underdogs lately. Sorry, people. I'm, I'm kind of drifting off track here. But Lion, uh, Lion picked up by the retry. A lot of disable in that guy, and a lot of bursts as well, which is something that I, I think is, is really nice up against that Bristleback, because if you just have steady attacks to go on that Bristleback, I mean, it's great, but he'll just put out more quills, and with that Bristleback, it's just not going to be as effective as just one giant finger of death hitting uh, the Bristleback in the face. Mind you, not the back, just the face. So going to be the one that they are going to be aiming for, which is also a reason why uh, why I think that n normally already a lion needs a lot of mobility. We saw we often see lions with blink daggers, and in this game it's going to be even more important for lions to be mobile because you need to be getting that finger of death Dire off in back. the face of Bristleback, not at the back. Don't want to have that reduced damage on one of your bigger spells that you have. An enigma gets banned out by a lions. And that kind of indicates that they are expecting the Razor to be mid and they just profit off lane Alchemist in a farming role. Now, of course, that is not entirely certain remaining. just yet. Alchemist can still be a support. They can still pick up something like Five a carry, Gyrocopter or Luna or what, what, whatever they want to pick up. And they can also, I mean, if they really want mi to mix Alliances things up, which is something that the retry has done, it is... Well, they haven't. I haven't seen them in Starletter going for, for this, but uh, they have mixed things up going for a bit of an orthodox lanes. But I wouldn't mind seeing a lion mid. Up against the puck, it's not ideal, but you can drain mana. And of course, the instant hex is pretty nice up against the puck. No phase shift is going to happen then. Uh, Razor on the safe lane, Alchemist support, and still pick up a last support. That could be something. Nature's Prophet offline is pretty standard. If they want to be really greedy, they could always put him in the jungle and put something else on the offlane. Five or put a Chen in the jungle who's still on a pool. Viper is your last pickup, so it seems like they are indeed gonna run that Alchemist as a support. Lone Druid was the last pickup for Alliance. They were still missing a Bulldog hero. Well, I say that, we actually have seen Bulldog play the Bristleback, I believe. But Lone Druid, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen Lone Druid for Bulldog, and it's. You know, I, I, I like seeing him play the hero. He's very good at it. But I'm not quite sure if it's like if it's a very strong hero anymore. He just needs a lot of build-up time. And in recent games, there just hasn't been that. The time to ramp up, the time to get the farm going, to get yourself a Radiance. If that is indeed what he Ten wants to go for, because if you are going to go for a fairly early push, then maybe he wants to just have got something like a Five Vlad's or something, just really so he can help out. Oh, hello. Boom. So, again, Star Ladder. Day 18 of Season 8 of 30 Prepare days of group stages in total, by the way, with a three-day pause around Christmas and a three-day pause around New Year. But day 18 of 30 days, and this is game one of six today. So we have got a lot of games. Not that many different teams to see. We'll see the retry later on today, and later on they'll be up against... Oh, dude, did I just say... They'll be up against SSD. There we go. SSD has been doing really well, by the way. They've only got one loss so far. Granted, they haven't played that many games. That kind of helps. And... I will type. I will also say for people in... Uh, people in Notative Evil know this, because Ayori and Sindarin are in-game. Casting in the game. But I'm assuming that they have also just turned on the stream. Considering that they had to wait for G League to be over. For the games uh, to be over before starting this one. So you can check that out. 
Let's take a look at who is playing what for the retry. They'll be on the dire side. We've got PGG. He actually swapped because he was on the Nature's Prophet earlier on. He has been playing the offlane uh, lately, but it looks like he is now giving the offlane to the Nature's Prophet, who is now Yoki. Uh, but PGG on the Alchemist support. It will be Yoki playing the Nature's Prophet. We yesterday saw him in the mid lane. He is the stand in for the retry, so they're just pro probably just testing out some things. And you normally want to just put your offlaner or put your stand in rather on something that he's most comfortable with. The Nature's Prophet might be that hero right now. Nubik, he'll play the Viper. He'll be supported by Eid. We'll play the Lion, and that means that there's uh, one hero left there. It is No Fear playing the Razor, and it looks like we are still gonna see him mid Yoki. Now, I just said that we saw him mid yesterday, so it looks, and from his items as well, that he is indeed gonna be mid here as well. Means an offlane Razor. He is not gonna have an easy time, I think. There's a bear chicks for a level 1 Rose. You never can tell, you never know. But yeah, offlane Razor. We'll, we'll, we'll see how he does here up on the bottom lane. We've got ourselves a lion on the Radiant side. It is Venomancer, played by EGM, no surprise there. I, I'm going to assume that most people realize that Aki is indeed playing that micro-heavy support, being the Visage. Looks like we're going to have ourselves a mid-Lone Druid. They were expecting to be up against a Razor probably, but Lone Druid now up against the one that tried to dodge the lane with a Lone Druid. It will be two heroes with summons. Admiral Bulldog on the Lone Druid on the mid lane. That means that Loda will take on the Bristleback bottom. And S4 on the off lane playing the Puck. And that's soul 5 there as we already have our first rotation. PGG with the Haste Rune smoked up together with Eid. They don't have a disabled just yet. PGG is charging up the stun though. He's gonna look for it behind the tower. Or in tower range still. In comes Aki. He might be able to help out. PGG might be actually killing himself right here. That Haste Rune is gonna allow him to go though. And Aki is gonna be the next target. First blood goes the way of Yoki's Nature's Prophet. But... Alchemist goes down as well. That's the bear doing work. The bear getting a kill. So overall, a one-for-one one trade, which uh, is a support for a support with the first or both kills going to the solo mids. But of course, the bigger difference being the first blood money going away of the Nature's Prophet. Who, even with the first blood money, if I were to bet my money upon one of these two heroes, I would put it on Bulldog because he is just uh, like a lone druid. Overall, it's just a bit more versatile here on, in a solo lane up against the Nature's Prophet. Like, regardless of who is playing it. Loda is having supports around him, or at least close to him, but they should be probably moving a bit closer soon, because we do have the supports rotating bottom and having the aggressive trial and complete. This is, pro this is a badass lion set, by the way. Ward placed, making sure that there's not going to be more stacks coming. No more creep waves. EGM, he hasn't specced anything just yet. No gill, no wards. Wants to keep it safe. Wants to keep it open, rather. So make sure that when he needs it, he can have it. It's a soul assumption for visit, so they don't actually have a slow just yet, but he was forced to go soul assumption because, of course, that engagement in the middle lane. In the meantime, on the top lane, it's a Viper versus the Puck lane. It's uh, not an easy lane for the Puck at all. It's, um... Like, you're gonna be harassed by the orb effect. That's just for sure. But S4, he's doing really well. He's actually ahead in last hits right now, which is decent right now. Later on, it will be more difficult because the higher that nether toxin is, the easier it will be for Nubik to last hit those creeps. That was just harassment. Ooh, this might actually be more than harassment. Double stun came out. PGG is gonna end up stunning himself. Nice, uh, nice dodge of line of sight from EGM, by the way. And he did pick up uh, his gale right now. Should something occur as this? If someone's gonna chase them down, they can try and uh, gale and turn and burn, as it were. I mean, it's a pretty safe lane. Safe trial lane, that is. I mean, it is the, sa the safe lane, but... You don't have any disables, so in a way it might not be as safe as it could be. But because Loda is very tanky and because there's two slows and a nuke, like, if you're gonna dive a team with a bristleback and a visage, if you're gonna go on that, then you better be real certain that you're gonna be getting the kills going because otherwise, if the fight lasts too long, there's gonna be too many quills, there's gonna be soul assumptions flying left and right, and you just can't do anything. So, the retry, they're kinda in a tough position right now in terms of the potential of being aggressive. It's... It's just... Not one of the easier lanes to go aggressive in. Ooh, they actually gale up PGG. They might be able to go for this. He's charging up his stun. Loda actually getting stunned already, but PGG 
Already dead, EGM still hexed up, but he'll be fine. Nature Prophet doll. Double damage rune coming in. Yoki is looking for a double kill. He cannot find Aki though, his own. So tree he's blocking him in, goes for Loda next, but Loda, he's got stick charges of plenty, and he's actually gonna go for this. A slow came in from Aki again. Double damage rune has worn off, but Eid is here with another disable. Loda, static link, he can run away from this, and Aki being around here, and the Gale coming back, EGM, back in the mix here, eats himself out of the sprout. Should be able to run from this, but Treants and Creeps chasing him down the south. It might be enough. Look at how fast he's trying to be, but he doesn't have boots. He's gonna die for this. In the meantime, Aki is stuck in the trees. One more hit is gonna do the job. Killing spree for Yoki as Puck dies on the top lane as well. The retry, they're making this work for them. Puck, S4, was not able to survive. He, he hit, but that's gonna be Nubik getting his uh, level 6 up because of that kill. And overall, I mean, the only upside for Alliance that they have right now with Nature's Prophet rotating is that Bulldog is having free farm mid, which is great for him. But overall, a double kill for the Nature's Prophet, or uh, this not, wasn't really a double kill because the, the timings were, of course, not entirely there. Uh, there's a ward up. Yeah, PGC pings it out as well, he knows it. But what an engagement that was. Very long one as well with EGM just coming in. He didn't die for the second time, but Visage did. As in, it was his first death, but he just stuck around for a bit, and of course his creep didn't really help him out either. Of course it was a good job that Loda kept himself up, but they weren't able to get the kills that they wanted to have. Now the main thing for the lineups, for both of, of the teams, is gonna be t the timing. When are they gonna try to push? When are they gonna try to five man? When is that mechanism gonna be up? And that's one of the timings that is, is actually quite important because it kind of coincides with the other timings I just mentioned. The retry might not have a good lineup for, or not a as solid a lineup as Alliance has for five manning, but they need to be ready for when Alliance goes five man. They need to have a mech for when that happens, because if the fight indeed, if the fights last long and the levels aren't just there for the retry. Then they need to have a mechanism to keep them up from all the quills. And for Alliance, the same thing goes because they have to be able to have long fights because that is the strength in their lineup later on. And for mechanism builders, well, I'm gonna assume that actually uh, for. Oh wow, that Nature's Prophet Ultimate helping out there. PGG coming in with a haste and a stun. Nubik with uh, the kill in the end. That's two times that Puck died. And he's also one of those heroes that just needs his blink dagger before he can actually do as much as he probably will want to. I mean, he's not completely hopeless without it, that's for sure, but... Kinda, kinda is one of his core items for a reason. Top tower is under attack. PGG, level 4. He's been roaming around a lot. As we do have a rotation coming in. Puck has rotated bottom. By the way, this is a farming Venomancer in the jungle, that's why he is so low. No battle going on with that one. But S4, he's got his Dream Coil, he actually wants to use it, Eid. This might be the first one to cut out here, he goes for stun, the Dream Coil still comes out though. Face shift there as well as the silence, Eid, he'll die here. That's what, gonna be uh, S4 taking a kill and making sure that his rotation is successful. Stick charges of the lion, not even used, realizing that, you know, he, he was a dead man. And of course also, not having PGG around didn't really allow for an option to, uh, to make a comeback. To make a... To, or at least to start fighting themselves. They might be able to take a tier 1 in the mid though, or on the top lane though. EGM comes out, plays a, plays a support, but other than that, he kinda can't come close. He's just level 4. Top tower is under attack. And level 4 is not gonna be able to do anything. Radiance so the tower goes down tower in the meantime, also with the bear that has it demolished, the tower on the mid lane is uh, getting uh, harassed plenty here. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Pushing power is strong in this one. Eight level four. I guess that's the downside of running the aggressive trial. And I mean, okay, the supports of Alliance are not that high level yet either. Both level four as well. But because of the heavy rotations, PGG still level four as Dyer's well, and Lion as well. Under I feel like they could have been higher if they were just uh, going for the safe lane. But then again, as long as they were able to slow down the like, nice deny coming out there. Oh, Loda, you're so dead. Almost able to kill off No Fear with the skill set. Seven stacks of the quill spray. Yes, that tooltip does not show properly. <clears throat> Ayoki coming in to help out there, of course. And there comes your first Hanamitas! 
But, I mean, it's it's one of the downsides of running the lone druid in the mid. He is not going to be one of those heroes that's going to rotate and, and make a difference. And and that shows. And with Puck not being in the mid lane, he doesn't get the same amount of gold as he normally does. So the impact that S4 has is going to be less than he normally would have. Loda does have his vanguard ready, though. And that might help him uh, protect this tower. Might help him in fights. Will help him in fights. What am I saying? Might for... And there we go. Viper is going to be having his mechanism done soon. He's going to be the mech builder. Assuming that it is uh, indeed the mech. Yes, it is. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet found in the jungle. Boom. You're dead. Soul Sumption. The nuke for Mackie. It's enough to take him down. Nature's Prophet just slightly in the wrong place, wrong time. And then, by the way, he's a solo mid Nature's Prophet. The solo mid Nature's Prophet. He has been involved in four of the six skills, which is nice. Was his first death. Also, normally a hero you don't really see in the mid lane. But he is a hero that can have a big difference. That can make a big difference in that mid game. Not mid lane, mid game. Early to mid game. Which is like right about now. Lone Druid highest on net worth, but uh, Viper, the hero that we haven't seen that much of. I mean, yeah, he just got two kills. That's great. Because he was able to kill off S4 twice by himself. Well, not really by himself. He did get help. But we haven't really seen him rotate that much. And I'm hoping that we're going to see him a bit more a active right now. He's got his mechanism, so he can be more active with this team as well. As Venomancer might be in a tough position right here. EGM is trying to hide. They haven't seen him yet. Now they have. And he thinks that he can take down PGG. With this poison over, he might actually be able to. Nature's Prophet coming in, though, with his ultimate bouncing through EGM. He will get sprouted up. I don't think he can get away from this one. Cannot TP out. And that is going to be boom. Oh, hello. Wow, I, for a second there, I thought he was going to be able to juke that, but no, he dies. Uh, it's a decent trade, one for one for support, but you don't want to give more kills to that Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet is doing really well on his own, doesn't need more help to get more gold. In the meantime, that is two heroes distracted while Loda is fighting uh, only one because of that on the bottom lane. Might be fighting more soon though, with Eid rotating as well as... Uh, Ooh, Viper, actually. They're gonna come in behind the nature or behind the Lone Druid. Let's see if they can do this. They've got the Finger of Death by this time. So they've got a lot of burst damage. But they can't find it right now. The pings actually come out. Pulldog goes back into the jungle with this Midas. And if people still come for him well, then he's got some backup coming. So he should be fine. That's a level 6 on Aki. Got himself the familiars. Of course, a level 7 on, on EGM because of that kill. And of course, we already saw the Poison Nova. The only one that's not level 6 just yet is PCG that just got killed Radiance off by EGM in the top lane. Another Midas. There's a second one this game. Maybe a bit of a standoff here in the middle lane. There's four heroes of Alliance hanging around mid. And they just saw the ward placed with their own ward on the opposite side of the river. EGM will play some wards here just to pull, push the wave back, make sure that they cannot go in. And I would say that it is the retry that is kind of fighting against the clock here. They're fighting up against a lone druid who will be too scary to deal with later on. I mean, their, their carry, a razor, is great. Don't get me wrong, but... Who's like either he is draining the, the damage of the bear or the bristleback, and the uh, the one that he is not draining is gonna be able to kill him off. It's just that simple. And even if the bear gets drained, you'll still have the entangle, so it's kind of forced to go up on the bristleback. But then the quills still come out, so they're both even without the damage output from the right clicks, they're both gonna be um, still very useful. Entangles and quills. Later on in the game, of course, the split push of the, nat of the Nature's Prophet comes into play. But with the split push and the turtle potential of... Uh, the, spl the split push of the Lone Druid and the turtle potential of the Venomancer. I don't think the Alliance is too worried about that. Yeah, I feel that, that indeed the retry is the one to be forced to make something happen. And they might be able to right here, EGM. It's gonna be on the run. PG is already char charging up the sun. Nature's Prophet teleporting in. He'll give the vision for the stun to hit in the Sprout. As the spray is still coming out, and that is going to be Venno dead. Eat with the last hit. Didn't even use his finger of death for that. That's good. That's good. At level 1, it has such a very long cooldown that you have to be very careful not to accidentally cast it. 
Or I say accidentally, but not to cast it on a kill that is already secured. Or not to cast it for a kill secure. KS. <laughs> what does he have a polar bear? Look to your own. One of the more not so pretty sets that the bear has, in my opinion. But then again, the one that I like is drooling, so oh well. Because you have to make choices. There we go. Ma there is a medallion up on PGG. That means that the retry can take advantage soon of their uh, dire advantage of Roshan. And with an Aegis, they can make something happen. They can they can try and uh, and take a fight and actually uh, get some map control off the back of it. Because that's the most important thing right now. So Bulldog is gonna get stunned up outside of the range of the Acid Spray though, but it looks to be enough anyway. With the medallion coming out, boom, you're dead. Nature Prophet gets the kill eat coming in from the side just in case, but it was Lone Druid just cut out of position. And uh, what I was gonna say is that taking fights and ta taking map control afterwards is just so important because not only does Lone Druid want to farm, no, you also have a Bristleback that needs farm, you've got yourself a Puck that needs farm who's still very far away from his Blink Dagger. So making the making the farming space for Alliance smaller in this case it would go a long way. Because you're just slowing down three carries at the same time, three cores rather at the same time. And they're gonna take Dyer's this tier one tower, tower bottom. There's no attack. there's no way they're not gonna take it so far. The towers were Radiant's even. Bottom tower apart from attack. the fact that the tier one mid was uh, denied on the side of the retry. But the retry is looking Dyer's to make uh, to get their tower advantage up again. And they should be able to do that. In the meantime, there's also a bit of a push going middle, but with these two supports, they're able to do something, but they're not going to be able to Radiant's do enough. It is PGG that comes in, wasn't charging up the stun before he teleported, doesn't, doesn't even have the mana for it. So it'll just scare the supports off. As the GM just scouted that ward, vanishing. And we have a smoke up. No fear in Eid. Well, to be honest, we see the minimap, we see where they're trying to go to, they're trying to go middle, but middle, EGM is already running away from middle, S4 is already in the dire jungle as well as Aki, and they're, they're here to protect Loda, should something happen. They're gonna try and take a tower top, make the towers even again. So it is gonna be Bulag maybe that smoke is going to? Oh no, they changed their mind. There's still that finger of death. Still surprised that they haven't used it yet. Oh, there they go. The tower. Takes off this look. Dyer's top tower and the retry apparently not too concerned about losing towers, which is I I mean I found that find that quite surprising. Unless they can get a tier one tower in return for tier one top, which would be a better deal. Dyer's top tower. I'm because I mean that dire advantage that I was talking about for Roshan is gonna increase so much if they take down this tier one. And they will take it down. There's no fortification. There's no way Alliance is gonna get here in time. Middle tower has fallen. With the Hastron up on S4. Might be looking for something here, but Joki is already out of the jungle. Very safe. They realized something was wrong. A lot of pings coming out on the side of the retry. As indeed Roshan is gonna be there. I mean, the teleport point for Alliance to now get to Roshan is that the closest one is the tier 2 bottom. Puck is showing himself. He knows this is happening. They know this is happening, but they can't do anything about it. There's just no way. They're not even able to take a tower and return for a top. In the meantime, Bulldog's still farming. He's sitting on 4300 gold, so if he wants to, he can get the relic. Courier might actually be on his way for that right now. Radiance is then about done. About ish. It's about 600 gold. Which is coming, slow but steady. Here on the bottom lane. So far, everybody of the retry is on the top lane, so he doesn't have to be worried about that. And he also sees that because there's some great wards coming out from Alliance. Having that control over the dire jungle, just knowing where the retry is, makes a big difference at this point. The gold graph is. Uh, <laughs> Very even though, I mean, we're 18 minutes into this game, and apparently, with the graph sitting at 1k gold in favor of the retry, that's nothing. At this stage of the game, this is 
This is neglectable. Experience graph, same story. It's five to nine. It's actually like the kills are in favor of the retry, but because of that hand of Midas, that early hand of Midas up on Bulldog, and because of the retry, going for a lot of five man or four man pushes or or roaming around with a couple of them, it is actually Alliance that is ahead on experience right now. What does the bear have? It is indeed a relic. Well, that's going to be the recipe for the radiant soon as well. Hey Jim, what you doing there, buddy? He has to be careful. Oh, actually, Nubik teleporting out. There, go the bottom. They're actually going bottom with all five of them. It's like they know something that we don't. Cause uh, we know something that they don't. There's a ra there's a radiance there, so that means that if Alliance is gonna five man fight right now, they'll have a. Substantial advantage due to that radiance. Lich's Prophet does have his nec ne Necronomicon level 3. We've got Aghanims being built on both the Viper and the Razor. They're gonna try for this. They're gonna force out some teleports here if. if Dyer's top tower is under attack. Well, if Alliance wants to defend that, that is. But for now, they're actually not. There's no fortification still, it's just EGM and S4 around here. S4 still not having his blade dagger. EGM pops out his ulti, but he dies straight after. Lone Druid has taken a tier 2 mid, and the tier 2 top goes down as well, so it's a two tower trade. S4 in some trouble. Finger of Death coming in, perhaps? Yep. And that's gonna be face shifted. Oh my god, the timing. The Dream Coil up on 4. PGG, Nubik, E, they are all getting burned to death by the Radiance, by the Quills. The Aegis drops as 4 still picked up finally, but Lodi, he'll get revenge and he'll get himself another kill right here. E, that's a double kill for Lodi, that is a team wipe. Nubik, of course, had the Aegis, so he died and came back up and then died again. That is going to be a worthy sacrifice of both EGM and S4. EGM did buy back for that fight, I believe. Was he dead? He was just that low. Okay. EGM <laughs> just got back alive because he was so low that he's already alive again. But yeah, that was that was great. And I can't believe that like the stun lasted for a very long time. I think he could have already fingered earlier, but S4, he realized what was coming. So he just face shifted the moment that he came out of the stun. He was just spamming that button probably just to know when he when well, just to get off get it off right before the finger came in. That was perfectly timed. Very impressive. Still getting that four-man dream coil off. Of course, he still died in the end. But worthy cause indeed. And he has his blink dagger after that fight, so that's a big difference. And right now, the retry, I mean, they were the ones to force this fight out. I don't think they're gonna try it again for a while. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Let's see if there's a deny. Nope, there's not. No big. He's uh, too late. The Sold Karas already on the way. Look at how much farm they just got from that fight. That's just insane. Taking a look at the gold craft. That is, that is just crazy. Same difference. Just that one fight was able to put all odds in the hands of uh, of Alliance. They retry. They need to recuperate. They need to farm. And of course, Van Viper has got his Agnims ready. That's nice. But No Fear needs him as well. Needs his as well. They need to actually have. Uh, oh, this is actually great. Because I was gonna say that they need to have the Alchemist starting to think about rotating into something more than a support here as well. And he's already got a Sun, so that's gonna be in Heaven's Halberd. And if you can make sure that the bear is not attacking, even though, or, or bear, or, or Bristleback. I mean, he's not gonna be able to entangle anybody. Wow, that's gonna be a Rod of Athos on, or used on Nubik, bought by Lodi just now. Can't go in on it though. Not enough damage in the meantime, no fear, and Eid scouted out by familiars. The bear looking for it, another run of Athos, it has such a short cooldown. There comes your tangle, that's a kill right there. And they actually look for more. The Dream Coil on too, the Gale already through as well as a Poison Nova, new big PGG. Can they stay alive here? It doesn't look like it, PGG, he'll die second. That's gonna be Nubik flying back to base. Looks like he might be able to make it out unless Loda can make a difference to that. Loda himself though, has to be careful. And Bulldog will finish the job. He'll get himself a double kill. 
The last one alive, Nature Prophet, no hope for him, that's a team wipe! Nobody dying this time on the side of Alliance. Just a long drawn out fight, favoring Alliance. And that Rod of Athos did do its work, making sure that there was no hope for no fear. He couldn't get anything off right there. Of course he used his Eye of the Storm, but he just died before it actually had any effect. This is going to be Alliance just pushing forward. Why would they stop? It's been so even for such a long time, but the minute that Alliance says, okay, we are ready to fight. Well, it showed. Is this a bear? Yes. It's a frog bear. Well, they will be able to get the bear at least. That's nice. 300 extra gold going the way of the, na of the uh, razor. It's welcome gold, but it's a scary business. The retry, they knew they were fighting up against the ticking time bomb of a lone druid. And I guess they decided on going too late. I mean, they, they did decide on going at some point, but by that time the Radiance was just about finished. There's four going for a side of the vice. I mean, it's not... The fastest and actually S4 is the lowest farmed hero on the map on the side of Alliance which says more about the supports than about S4 EGM just very rich building towards his own uh, agonims and he's already got the veil of this court so he's already hurting his ulti is already hurting and visage 2400 gold in his bank that's where most of his gold is coming from just sitting there waiting to be used and there's already a four staff up on the visage, medallion as well. Other than, other than that, what more do you wish for? Bristleback, looking to go for a heart perhaps? Considering he already has the ethos and the uh, vanguard as well, I mean, it's not that much left that you can build with the health booster. Point booster. Vitality booster. Booster. Tush. Will be one of the more tanky heroes. Illusion. Viper is still going to be very effective against one of those because I mean his his nether toxin is just going to be like it's still going to be hurting. And as you just saw, Loda did end up running away a bit from Nubik because he was a bit a bit well a bit scared for him, and he knew that his team could finish it off as well. So he still has to be careful. With no fear now, with his agonims completed as well. And the retry. They've got some nice map map control, or nice map control. They've got decent map control. They, they are having a very defensive map control right now. Making sure that they have control over the Roche Pit still. Wanting to, of course, abuse their Dire Vengeance, which is going to respawn in a couple of seconds. And the retry. They're actually going to find this. This is all five heroes of Alliance here, though. And they are coming from the high ground if there is indeed a fight going on here. So does the retry actually want to do this? Fighting against all five heroes here? Well, this is not going to be something that Dyer's Alliance is going to expect. But as four already realizing Dyer's that he might, might be needed to make a big play right there. He jumps in. Dra three man dream coil. Let's see what they can do. Quills. It's all there. Eat already slowed. Tries to go for the puck. He can actually get him hexed up, but there's no damage coming out. Never mind. Finger of death. That's your damage right there. No fear still picked up. But while that was all happening. Bulldog just bashing with his bear and that's gonna be another kill. This one goes away of Aki. That's another team wipe. And now, <laughs> indeed S4 was bursted down. The lion didn't really uh, leave his target at, at any point. But I think that lion might have been needed to help his other teammates more than to chase down the puck that was already retreating and already did all what he needed to do. We'll never find out though if that would have made a difference because it looks like uh, this might be the last, might have been the last fight there was there. With all the tier 2 towers down, Alliance can just push forward. Only one set of racks left, Eid is around here. Still level 9, so still only level 1 on his ultimate. Stun being charged up. He's gonna be only hitting up on Bulldog. Nice uh, microwing with his bear away from... Uh... Ooh, he actually lifts the bear. That's pretty cool. Lion does not lift though, no fear. His Eye of the Storm is up if he wants to use it, but he might not get a chance to because he'll just get killed off here. There he goes. PGG and Nubik still in this, looking for a kill up on maybe the bear, maybe up on Loda, but I mean, look at them. 
Who's gonna kill them right now? Well, it's not gonna be the retry, but because the retry just called a GG. The retry have tapped out. Alliance will take their victory and will continue to be on the top of the list. Now with three points extra to their name, and of course I'm talking about the listed list, the rankings of Star Ladder, because that is what you are watching. Star Ladder, Star Series, Season 8. This was game number one, we're gonna jump ourselves to the second game, we're slightly ahead of schedule right now, so we will probably have a short break. I will be joined by G Advance, by the way, so no more solo casting for me. For the rest of the evening, we're gonna have five games after this, the coming three games will all feature Na'Vi. So I hope you stick around and watch the games of Na'Vi vs OSG, Na'Vi vs Flipside Russia, and Na'Vi vs Relax. OSG, by the way, it is a bit of a David vs Goliath kind of matchup, but OSG is the one that was able to take a win of Alliance. So let's see if they can also take the, take out uh, Na'Vi here as a uh, giant slayers, as some might call them. We'll find out, though. Stick around for more Dota 2. You're watching Star Ladder. I already said that. I realized that. It's just a habit. Just a habit, anyways. We'll be right back. <laughs> 